Okay, we're ready to start making this stack of metal sheets that we're gonna age. Uh, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of OxyClean in the bottom of this plastic tray. And then I'm gonna lay down my uh, first sheet and underneath it, I'm gonna take a piece of tin foil and just rumple it up. This is gonna make some patterns. Okay. And then I wanna sprinkle a little more OxyClean on top of that. Put it back down. And then I think I'm going to place this oval template on here and another ring. Now what's gonna happen here is anything touching the metal is going to keep the metal shiny. Anything that is exposed will get uh, aged. I'm gonna be careful not to get piles of this OxyClean on here because if you do, it will uh, cause a real hard crusty um, material that's very, very hard to get off. Uh, let's see, I think I'll, now the back side of this is also gonna be affected with this same pattern. So I'm going to pick out what I want on there. Okay, there's a good one. And I think for this one, I'm gonna use this as a block out. Might be kind of interesting and maybe set this oval up here at the top. I like to just experiment with the patterning that might happen and not try to connect it right away with an image that I might be using. And if you've got too much on top of this resist piece, just brush that off a little bit. Uh, this piece is our real sparkly 40 grit sanded piece. I'll lay that on top of there. And then I have a gear. I love this gear and the way it makes patterns. So I'm gonna place that right on top and then sprinkle on more OxyClean. Okay, and this is the randomly scratched piece of metal that we had. Actually, I think I'll, nope, I'll use the diagonal scratched here on top. And then I think what I'm gonna do is use another oval. I like the ovals, particularly if you're going to do tintype portraits. Okay, and then this is our last piece of metal. And we wanna have something heavy on the top. So I have another gear that I'm gonna place on here. The reason you have something heavy here is because when you pour the water in, everything might start to float up and then that would really change what the uh, movement of the pieces that you've used for your a block out. Now you pour in water. And you pour in just enough so that the uh, stack of metal is covered in water. You don't need to have a lot over the top, just maybe a half an inch. Okay. And then I like to just take it and kind of tip it a little bit and get the OxyClean to flow across the surfaces. And then just for good measure, I'll sprinkle a little extra on top. If you watch this, after maybe a half an hour, the OxyClean will start to form little oxygen bubbles and you can actually see those rising on the sides. And that's what is going to cause the oxidation of the metal and turning it different colors. Get some in the middle of these circles. All right, now we'll leave that set. You'll notice some changes within four hours, but it's best to leave it overnight. And if you want really, really deep coloration, uh, leave this for two days, but we will come back 
um, in a day and take this apart and see what we have. Oh, this is like Christmas morning. I just love undoing one of these stacks. First, I wanna tell you that this is the sheet that I had applied the masking to, and then I laid it on the top of the whole stack and added it to what was being uh, distressed overnight. And then I've already peeled off the masking on this, but you can see the two sides and how they differ. When you are uh, aging the metal this way, remember you don't get very many brown tones. You get pretty much grays. So this is the gear that we had on here. And there was a lot of flow of the OxyClean across the water and that's what creates these gradient and uh, kind of wave-like patterns. Not too much of the gear showed up here. That's the opposite side. And when I had placed that other piece on, this oval had slipped a little bit, so that's why it gave, gave a double oval. But that's okay, there's no harm done. Okay, this is a uh, piece that we had done the cross grain on. And again, these marks here, the wave-like forms or leaf forms, are caused from the OxyClean flowing across as the water moved, and then it stopped and the OxyClean stayed in position. This is the back side of the sheet that had laid on top of this old gear. So we'll take our gear off. Oh, this is beautiful. I love this. This is gonna have a lot of possibilities. It's got beautiful dark stripe graining and uh, some of the silver is still sparkly. Again, I never know what I'm gonna combine with these, but I just keep uh, making these plates because they're so much fun to do. Now this is the back side that had laid on top of the oval and the square. So wherever the bottom sheet always has a stronger pattern from the uh, items that are in contact. So that's that side. And then the back side, not too much did uh, happen with that. But on something like this, we would polish this center to be mirror-like with SOS and then leave all this subtle uh, discoloration and the graining uh, on here. This is the one that we uh, scratched, gosh, what? Oh, it's circular with the very coarse sandpaper. Okay, and this was the masking that went around the outside. Now, this piece right in here, you can see there is a little heavy crusting in here. That's where I had put on too much OxyClean and it got caught in there. And that forms a really hard, uh, calcified uh, layer on there that sometimes is hard to get off. I've used that to some advantage when I've worked on very large pieces. Uh, for example, a 20 by 30 sheet that I laid outside on a picnic table in the center of a wooden box. I lined that wooden box with plastic and then I really heaped on a lot of the uh, OxyClean and really and let it set, I think, for three days. And it really got crusty and ugly and you know very, very old looking. It took quite a bit to scrape all that off, uh, but I was able to get it off. And uh, what that comes off with is either a razor blade, very lightly so you don't get a shine back in your metal, or you can use uh, an old door room key card. You don't want that on there when you're doing your transfer. If you get too much on a plate and you really don't like it, you can just go outside and sand the whole thing off and start over. But this one is being, that that's smooth now, so I don't have to worry about that. And of course, the back side simply laid on top of this crumpled piece of foil, so it has kind of an interesting random pattern to it. Now, the next step is to take these over to the sink and rinse them off. And when we rinse them, we'll do a light wash with a little bit of vinegar and water, maybe a tablespoon of vinegar and a cup of water. And what that does is it just cuts this real soapy uh, film that's on here that doesn't quite get rinsed off in water. 